Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Daniel Ortiz Rants at the Movies podcast, the top rising movie podcast in the world. Uh, we're on episode six right now. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at our favorite top movies um, that are basketball movies uh, from my perspective and the perspective of my special guest today. So uh, who's going to be joining us today? He's a St. John's University legend who played college for the Redmen, now called the Red Storm, from 1990 to 94. Uh, led them to the NCAA tournament three times. He also played NBA basketball for the Cleveland Cavaliers, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Denver Nuggets, and is currently the coach for the Millennium High School, uh, Millennium High School in Brooklyn, New York. He's a Queens legend, Bronx legend, B Brooklyn legend, all around New York State legend, Mr. Chanel Scott. Chanel, thanks for joining me on this call today, man. Thanks for having me, my man. I yeah, mean, yeah. Kind words, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt, man. I got to give you the the quick big ups, you know. So, yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And uh, what we're gonna be doing for today is uh, we're gonna be talking about my top five favorite movies as a movie critic, and we're also gonna be talking about uh, Chanel's top five favorite movies as a professional. Um, and I'm an amateur uh, three on three crate ball legend in Crown Heights. If you weren't aware of that, I, <laughs> I got my uh, my my jersey retired up in the the Marcy Project. So uh, just, just everything is good, man. Anything, anytime you can accomplish anything on any level, is all good, man. <laughs> right, you know? right, absolutely, absolutely. So um, let, let's go ahead and get started with it, man. So um, uh, you went ahead and just got five movies that you said. Uh, were your top five favorite movies? I, I definitely want to hear about um, what what was your experience with them, why you enjoyed these movies, and if there's any type of uh, uh, anything that you can relate to the movie that makes that experience a lot better. Would love for you to share that with us. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So what what's your number five uh, top basketball movie of all time? Number five, all right, meaning not not the best, but definitely in high regard. Yes. Um, there's so there's so many, but. I would probably put uh, White Man Can't Jump. I'll put White Man Can't Jump at five. I, I enjoyed that movie. I just enjoyed, uh, you know, Wesley Snipes, the, the, the playground aspect of everything. Uh, you know, just the, the white guy who couldn't jump, but he, he just kept trying and kept working hard. <laughs> just, just, you know, it just meant that, like, white, black, like, you, if you go hard and you love it, that's, that's what it's about. So, right, right. I, I, like the, I like the movie, man. So yeah, I, I know White Man Can't Jump came around uh, in 1992. So what what was it about 92, that time frame, as far as where you were at too, uh, made that movie just as as much impactful for you? Well, you know, 92, I was in college I, and I was I was young in college and I was, you know, my whole thing was like at that time was just working hard and just loving basketball. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I kind of identified to uh, White Man Can't Jump, even though, you know, it was like um, a knock towards a white guy who couldn't jump. But at the same time, you know, it was just about like work. These guys loved the, the, you know, the playing basketball for for the, you know, in the underground. It wasn't like to get wreck or fame. It was just like to be the best on that level. Yeah, so was, at that time, very, yeah, it was very street. Very yeah, street. it was very street. And at that time, I was I was coming into my my inner street to become the best basketball player I can possibly be. You know, in college. So right. that's why it identified with me. Okay, and if you were to rate the movie, what would you give it between an A to an F? I'll give it a a, a hard B. A hard B. Okay. C plus hard B. You know. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. that that definitely deserving of the movie. So I agree with that. Um, my number five movie was uh, Hoop Dreams. I'm not sure if you remember that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that one was less of a. a, a a, a fictional movie it was you know it was a doc based off a documentary of um uh william gates and arthur ag i believe their names were definitely and um you know what i really liked about the movie was that it was more than what i expected so when it came out i believe i was in high school and um you know all, all of us at, at that time frame you know want to be some kind of sports legend that's when the dreams are huge you know so um what really really stood out to me about that movie was the fact that it was these two unknown athletes, at least unknown to me, but uh, I guess they were grew up in Chicago and um, seeing them, you know, developing themselves, not only as basketball players, but as actual men, you know, 
And um, also seeing, uh, uh, I believe it was Arthur Ag was the one that, that got into that one tournament and, you know, his team started winning and he was carrying the team on his back. I think I always like that underdog story where every time you see these players, you know, you, you think that they're going to fail, but you see him like really excel and taking his team and everybody's starting to get, there's a, a momentum and an excitement that's built around it. And me as the viewer of that movie, I really love that because I started rooting for him too, you know, and you start getting into the excitement, you start feeling the chills every time that they win. But, uh, you know, once they, they lost the tournament, which, uh, sorry, spoiler, <laughs> but once they got deep into the tournament and lost, you know, um, to see him like really just break down from that. He was hurt, but also you see him continue to keep progressing and knowing that there was a lot there. It really made it a real impactful movie to me. So uh, with that one, I personally gave that one a B minus. I don't know if it still holds up in 2020 as it did. It, uh, I believe it was in 1994, but it, it was a great and impactful movie, especially for me to, to just understand how to overcome objections, you know? Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want me to, you want me to talk about my number four? Yeah, yeah, let's go into your number four. So my number four is Hoop Dreams. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, everything you said was absolutely correct. I don't want to have to repeat any of those things. Being a, I was, th I was a year older than uh, Arthur Ag. Um, mm. So everything I went through, as far as uh, almost everything, not the same exact storyline, but just, and not, you know, maybe not the, uh, subplot with the family and everything but just growing up in the city poor and trying to make it and also being recruited and going through everything that he went through i saw everything he went to, they had this scene in there where he was in the nike camp like mm -hmm. with all the coaches being recruited i was there uh just oh. going all the way to the to championship game with my high school i was i did the same thing um we wasn't as much as underdogs but you know it was like the same type of story and actually in like 95 or 96 i think i actually got to uh, play with Arthur A.G. a little bit in the USBL. So it was funny. And oh. I asked him a lot of questions, too. But as far as, like, being a, a basketball lover, an impresario, like, I know that's why you like it and myself, mm -hmm. that's a, that's an excellent movie. I, I, I actually would give it, like, a def, like a B plus. It was, it, it was, like, real truthful. It was, like, everything, like, that you wanted. It, it, it could even be, like, an A in almost as far as a basketball outlook because mm -hmm. it was – when I saw it, I was just blown away. And in fact, I didn't know nothing about the movie. And somebody said, yo, they're having a premiere. They're, slow, they're doing this thing for Hoop Dreams. And man, I was like, I was blown away by it. So mm. that was my number four. So so did you get a chance to play with him during the documentary at all, during that tournament? No, no. So he, no. he was the year behind me, actually. Uh, he was okay. the year behind me coming up. So I, he, And the year before Nike camp, he wasn't there. Like, um, And he had the other kid with him, too. He was He came up behind me, too. Oh, OK. He, the, the, I forgot the, uh, his boy's name, the other one they was following. He went to Marquette. He, oh, he had, uh, Will, William Gates. William Gates. So, uh, William mm -hmm. Gates actually played with one of my, one of my friends, uh, Amal McCaskill. So, I, uh. you know, so it was, it was like, you know, it touched, it touched home when I saw, it, when I saw that documentary. Yeah. Have you, have you seen it recently at all? No, I may have to watch it again. Yeah, because it's, it's been a while for me. I, I, I don't know if it was going to be as impactful, but I, I'm sure it will because, like I said, I love underdog stories, so... It, it, it just makes sense that that's something like that both of us are going to love, you know, especially being, being that it has that, that deep street element to it, you know, and when you see somebody coming out of that, it's, it's very impactful for us, you know? No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. So um, my number four, I, I, I put Space Jam at number four. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, I, I was already in college. I, I, I wasn't a, a kid at the time. So, um, while I did love it, I thought it was going to be stupid when it first came out. I thought it was going to be just some kid kid movie, but you know, it turned it turned out to be more impactful than I thought. You know, and um, you know, as a as a youth, especially a Knicks fan, I've always been a Michael Jordan hater, bro. I used to hate Michael Jordan. Okay, <laughs> and it and it it wasn't a, a pure hate. Yeah, it was just that you know that he was just going to beat you every time that he he stepped on the court. You know, but um. I, I did find it very impactful to see uh, uh, Michael Jordan actually doing something. He was, he actually did a very good acting job on, on that movie and him able, able to, you know, get with Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck and all those guys and pretend like they were there and actually still do a good job. Because as we know, most basketball players are not great actors. Um, I think he really held it down very well. The story was well written. I thought they were just going to, Hey, we got Michael Jordan. We got, 
uh, these Disney characters, uh, Disney characters, these uh, Warner Brother characters, we can just go ahead and, you know, just chalk it up and people are just going to go see it. But they actually put a lot of effort into the movie. And so I, I really enjoyed that one a lot. So I gave uh, uh, Space Jam uh, a B. That's a B movie to me. Uh, everything, it was an excellent movie. Uh, I, I, as a Nick fan, growing up in New York, I hated, I didn't like Michael Jordan a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but the movie, I, I love the movie. I mean, I'm a, I was a basketball fan first. I found out I was a basketball fan first. I love the movie. It you know took me from beginning to end. I, I was curious to see what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, growing up watching uh, Looney Tunes, of course, and they, they did have Patrick Ewing in the movie too. So that's he's true. One of my favorite players. So I enjoyed the movie a lot. So I, I, I definitely, it's, it's a high, as far as basketball is concerned, it's, it's definitely up there. It's a, it's a high ranking movie in my regard. You know, strong B plus probably. Right. I, can't, I, I can't also discredit the fact that they had a lot of basketball players in the movie that I like. So yeah, I was a Patrick Ewing fan. I, I loved uh, Larry Johnson. You know, I, I, always wanted, I always wanted the Charlotte Hornets jersey. They were always my second team, you know, just because of him. Uh, but also, you know, I, I like Charles Barkley, you know, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know if you, I don't know if you can see it. Matter of fact, I got him back there. So, you know, I was a huge, I was a huge Charles Barkley fan too. So that kind of added to it. And especially seeing these guys, you know, Charles Barkley isn't the best actor, but you know, he, <laughs> you don't yeah. expect him to be a great actor. Yeah. He wasn't uh, trying to do that. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's there for his check and probably went to the golf course right afterwards. You know? <laughs> For sure. All right, cool. So uh, let, let's go to, did you say number four yet? Yeah, I did number four. So okay, I, I cool. had, uh, yeah. So um, let, let's go to uh, number three. What is your number three? Number movie? three. Now, I don't know how, I haven't watched it in a while, but this also, this was one of the, uh, you know, the movies that, you know, just captured my love for basketball coming in uh, and just, you know, wanting to play it and achieve my goals and everything. It was the fish that saved Pittsburgh with my Dr. J. So Dr. J was, of course, you know, talk about late seventies. You know, this uh, was pre Michael Jordan, pre Magic Johnson. This this movie was uh just uh, it was just you know Dr. J was in it, and it was it was a, a well written movie. Uh, you, do you know anything about? No, fish no, I, I've actually I I may have heard of that movie, but I've never watched it. Like, yeah, go ahead, tell us a little bit it, about you gotta, it. You gotta see it again. Uh, basically, uh, it's like a local team in Pittsburgh. You know, at the beginning, no fans, no nothing. Then Dr. J comes, he rallies the troops. Then they start. You know, they have they have tryouts. It's all it's dudes with knives. And <laughs> it was crazy, man. They put together this, this ragtag bunch who became like a. a a, a town favorite, uh-huh. and it was it was it was good. it was good. It was a good movie, man. I have to go. I'm gonna go watch it again too. The fish that saved Pittsburgh. So that's my number three. Yeah. So was there like afros and afro like, picks everything. all over the place you know, and high like, socks? Like, yeah, high socks, afros, <laughs> guy talking, you know, rude uh-huh. dudes, <laughs> that type of you know atmosphere. Uh, so um, so so was it was it based off of his life or was it just like? No, oh, it was a, it was a uh, it was a non it was a what you call nonfiction movie or a fiction a fictional. Fictional it's movie. a fictional like, movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like based off anybody's life, but it was just like a, a local basketball pro team just trying to uh, make it and how they go through changes and everything. And they had the little kid who's like the uh, the, the ball boy. Now he's the mascot the uh-huh. slash assistant coach. You know, he does everything for the team. And the team like became like an exciting team for the fans to come see. So it was like the transformation from a terrible team to like a well-respected team. And it was it was and with Dr. J at the, at the, at the head. Yeah, well, when did this movie come out? It's like 1978, something like that. Oh, man. Well, I, I, let, me, let, me, let me see. Can you look it up? Like like 1978, Fist that Saved Pittsburgh. Uh, I could look it up real quick here. But yeah. let me ask you this while I do that. Um, and I don't want to date you here. Obviously, if, you, if you're talking about a, movie, a basketball movie from 1978, right. <laughs> everybody's not going to know you're, you're 21 here. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, what, what was the impact for you during that time frame that this movie made for you? Like, what, what, what was the thing that really, like, grasped you about it? You talk about, late, you talk about late 1970s, early 1980s, probably when I first saw it. And it just coming from... Uh, it just felt it just felt like the movie that that got love of basketball. It was that, mm-hmm. that's what it was, the, the theme was. It seems like and Dr. J, who was like my, my favorite, he he had this terrible basketball team and he had like this positive attitude to like 
you know, rally the troops and keep everybody motivated and actually, you know, talk to the front office and they got, you know, different and a whole, whole bunch of side stories at, at the same time too. I, I can't remember it. We got to, hopefully one day we'll talk about it again, but it was just, just that love of basketball. And, you know, and for me at an early age, just to see Dr. J, I was just, I was glued to like, you know, the whole, they had the little kid in there as well, who I, you know, a little poor kid who I probably identify with. Mm -hmm. uh, who also loved basketball, and he was just doing everything he could like to get this ragtag bunch in order so they could like be a, an exciting team. So that was like the and that, you know as a shorty just starting playing basketball, that's the stuff I wanted to see. I wanted to see Dr. J. And, you know, back then, think about it. Who the hell was making movies? I mean, obviously he was, but to have your favorite player in a in a movie, right at, right. at that time, starting to play, starting off to play back like Dr. J was like who I identified with right away. It's like oh. My God, like you know, right? And it's almost like the the Space Jam of his time without yeah. the 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 cartoon. Similar, like what you find out about. It. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. What you I find haven't, out about it. but I'll definitely put it on my list. And real, real really quickly, uh, you're not that old. It came out in 1979. So. Exactly, and I probably didn't see it until like the the 80s. I, I don't I don't uh, think I seen it right away, but I saw it like in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, awesome. So uh, number three. Okay. Yeah. Oh well. Also, so what, what would you give it as far as a rating from what you? Well, the rating for bat. Uh, you know, as far as a rating. For... Oh, say that again. You froze on me for a second. Oh, I saw for a rating. Start for a rating. I probably would give it like a B plus. B plus. Yeah. All right. Cool. I, I'm definitely gonna put that on my list to watch because um, you know, those those movies mean a lot to us. You know, especially seeing Dr. J, who's obviously a legend, and a lot of folks. Nowadays, a lot of these kids aren't going to know who he is. So no. um, definitely want to see what, what, what he has to show for in that movie. So, um, but yeah. All right. So my, my number three movie was Sunset Park. Mm. And um, what you're going to see with my movies is that there's a, a theme of, you know, the nineties going through this entire thing. I, nineties is just my time. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, right. Sunset Park really just really love this movie. It's, Almost like uh, how, how you, you mentioned the, the fist that, that saved Pittsburgh, um, where it's these ragtag, you know, kids, you know, delinquents almost in, in this high school in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, that are brought together by, you know, a woman that wasn't even a, a, a coach. So um, seeing her uh, put them together, you know, kind of understanding not just like, hey, you're, you're a basketball player, but understanding each one of their individual personalities and how their personalities can um, can can be uh, attributed to their basketball skills. I, I thought that was really awesome, and also just seeing you know where I grew up actually being on the silver screen, and you know seeing this team that was just another underdog team that really just came up and um, you know rose through the ranks of you know when everybody thought that they were a failing team that you know they actually persevered over it, and then. That film also had guys like uh, Fredro Starr, who, you know, who I already knew was already a good actor. I remember seeing him in movies like, um, uh, what was that movie that, that he was in? Strapped. Um, that's a pretty old one. It was an HBO original series that a lot of people don't know about it. But, you know, him just seeing him flourish from being like, okay, I'm going to play the Onyx. Yeah, Onyx. yeah, yeah. He, you, you thought he was going to be this whole gangster, you know, which he did portray a little bit in the movie, but he also portrayed a lot of, like, emotion and feeling. And he was very vulnerable. And uh, you know, I would have loved to see him do more movies. He, he did a few movies, but, you know, yeah. I think Sunset Park was probably one of the best movies where he, he really had a chance to shine. Then you see a young Terrence Howard, you see uh, uh, Talent. I don't know if you remember Talent, the comedian coming oh, out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was a, it was an awesome supporting cast. So I, I really love that movie. And when it came out, I was in high school, and um, you know, still I still had my hoop dreams, even though I'm only five eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's still, the thing. Back in the days, the thing I love about basketball. Back in the days, everybody had a hoop dream. Right, like, right. It was like it could be local Larry from the yeah. corner. He was going pro. He was telling right. you, bro. You can't mess with me. What? Yeah, yeah I, I tell you, um, when I used to travel in New York in the 90s, um, I would always travel. You know, we were in the baggy jeans at that time. Um, I would always have a pair of basketball shorts under it because, you, as you know, in New York, every corner has a, has a, 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 a basketball court. So it was like, oh, you're coming home from school. Oh, wait a minute. They playing ball over there? 
they need a third person, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? So, cool. yeah. So um, all of us had those hoop, those New York hoop dreams. And even though most of us got into sales and, you know, doing other crazy things, you know, it was still a dream. And you know, it, it, it was also fun. So, yeah, I feel um, like and and the one thing about Sunset Park, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it, Sunset Park is a fabulous account of of high school, inner high school basketball, and, and like a public school system of of New York City. And actually, that movie is based off of uh, high school. He was on that team. It didn't go into like him per se, but it was like they had a female coach mm -hmm. at Prospect Park. And she turned the, the program around and it became like a, a respectable program for in, a, in that time period, like in the late 80s, uh -huh. going, into, uh, going into like the 90s, like, the, you know what I'm saying? So that was, um, I like that movie a lot, too. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. I didn't know it was based off of a, yeah. a real event. So that, that actually adds a lot more to it. And right. um, it, it, it's one of those movies that actually still held up. I, I haven't seen it recently, but probably saw it in the last like five or six years and it's still very entertaining, man. I, and, and if you want to see just quintessential starting of Terrence Howard, just being oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he and did he did an amazing job in that yeah. movie. And you can see we didn't like, even talk about that. Like you know, Terrence Howard has done everything, but that was like at, at his beginnings. Like you right. know, you hell right there that something was. He's he's really the go there. He's gonna go wherever yeah. he has to go. Like uh, he's, the most funny part in that movie is when there was in the bus coming down. And uh, I think he ducked down, and you saw the smoke coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we smoke coming out. And he came back up. What made him think that smoking on the bus, he would be able to get away? With that? Oh, that was great. That was high school. That was high school, man. Back that's in those, true. To the schools like that too, you know. Yeah, it yeah. Gritty, yeah. It was grimy. That's that's what I loved about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, one thing I'll say about that movie also is that I, I was just happy that everybody like they really put their their effort into that movie. Um, that could have literally been a throwaway movie, and a lot of people don't know about it, but it, it was a really good movie, man. I really enjoyed Sunset Park. So I'm going to give that one, I'm going to give that one a B plus. That was one of my favorites. No doubt. Yeah. So what? what's your, uh, what's your number two. two? My number two is Love and Basketball. Mm. Love and Basketball. I just think uh, just to put the love story in there, but just the love of, Love and basketball, but love of basketball as well. Just like two lives, you know, pent up with, to it. And Sanaa Lathan, of course, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, Omar Epps. It was just, it was just an excellent movie. I thought. Uh, mm -hmm. it, I just like, I just like the whole, the flow of it, you know. And they followed him through high school all the way to the pros. You know, they had her pro career, his pro career. You know, um, just, uh, just everything about the movie. I like just good acting. You know, good bas you know, basketball, good acting. Well, I mean, what more can you ask for? So, yeah. one of my favorite movies. So, so don't judge me on this. Um, and a lot of people have already. I, I still haven't seen Love and Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still haven't seen it. Oh, um, man. <laughs> uh, hey, at the Practice. time, well, let, let me let me ask you: did, did you have a girlfriend when you went to go see that movie? No, but so now like that, I think she's a good act. When when that movie came out, I guess uh, when did that come out? Early early nineties. I believe that, yeah, no, that came out late 90s. Late 90s. But I, I could tell you this, that uh, the lead actress reminds me of somebody uh, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's funny because you just froze right there for a second, too. Oh. <laughs> it's like, uh... You hear me? You too. Yeah, you yeah, I got you. I know oh. that was me. I just... Oh, you did it on purpose. Yeah, I just did that on purpose. You're good. You're good. Don't worry about it. I'm not pretty sad here. Nah, yeah. But I, so I give that movie, actually, I give it an A, man. I gave uh, another basketball A. Just it, you went you went into and expecting something, and it mm -hmm. gave you exactly what you expected, plus mm -hmm. a little bit more. You know, nothing over the top, definitely nothing on the bottom. You know, it was just an excellent movie. So, so you say you're saying that it doesn't have to be a date movie. You could just watch that one and still enjoy it. Then it doesn't have. To, I, it, yeah, you know, what I mean, what, once I saw Love and Basketball, I was drawn to it anyway. I just wanted to know what it was. You know, I, I was curious, and then mm -hmm. I said, okay. And then just hearing about right, a female basketball player and a, and a uh, you know a guy basketball player they know each other in, in through high school, in high school they both playing basketball and then it just showed both of their careers and to college and everything so I thought that was the, like the real good thing which is it was like real detailed I thought 
Yeah, and, and, and very, very rarely in movies do you see uh, a, a woman portrayed in, in a basketball movie as well. So, you know, actually being the athlete. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I'll make sure to put that on my list because I know I have some some people out there that I've told that I've never seen that movie before too. And they always look at me like I, I, I literally have no no nose on my face. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make sure I, I write that down. And I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it, y'all. So. All right, cool. So my number two movie, uh, basketball movie, is Above the Rim. So um, mm -hmm. I, I, I actually, I saw, I remember seeing it in the movie theaters, and I actually just saw it maybe about two weeks ago. It's on Netflix right now. If nobody's ever seen that one. But um, just, man, you, you forget about the star-studded cast in this movie. Like, of course, we know Dwayne Martin, but Tupac is in it. You have uh, Bernie Mac. Um, you have uh, Leon. Uh, who else is in that movie? There's a few other people that are in that flick too. But uh, I mean, I, I know you said two. I mean, two oh, uh, Wood Harris. Wood, Wood Harris. Harris. A young Wood Harris, where he wasn't even like a, a, a main character like he is now. You know, um, but it, it it was. Oh, um, also the the Wayne's brother, uh, Marlon Wayne's. Marlon was in it. Yeah, also in it too. Okay. So, um, what what I love. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> putting the powder on his hands. <laughs> but yeah, um, what 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 I what I really loved about that movie it was just it was just another another view, another glimpse into um, you know street life and basketball, you know. And um, I think what they did with this movie specifically is that they actually took a lot of the harshness of the streets, like a lot of stuff that you see dealing with. You know, people that 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 might be in gangs, people that that will, will deal with violence, and kind of slowly merging those two two uh, two worlds together. You know, where um, Dwayne Martin's character has to has to navigate both sides, and he has to be good. He has to control his emotions through the entire movie, and you see his development. And, and what I loved about it was, you know, during my second viewing a couple of weeks ago, is the fact that you know. It still holds up. It's still a very good movie. You might see you might see a couple of you know uh, 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 terrible acting faux pas here and there, but you know you, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a good performance from from a Dwayne Martin. You're gonna get a good performance from a Tupac. You know, uh, uh, um, uh, Marlon Wayans is gonna do his thing as as far as being the comedic aspect of it. So, um, really love that movie. Um, was that in in, in any of your picks there? Uh. It's, it, it was definitely, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was holding on to above the rim for five uh, honorable mention. Okay, okay, but yeah, go ahead and talk about it, man. Go ahead. No, it, was a, it was a fantastic movie. I mean, it, it's it's Harlem based. Mm -hmm. I'm from Harlem. Um, it just it it was a lot of things. I don't know if the stories were exactly like that, but uh, they probably was close. You know, you had the, you know the drug dealer coach of the, the teams, and you got players who were sought after, and you got, hey, he might play with this person, he might play with that person, and. You know, everybody trying to win the tournament. So it would just, it just hit home when I saw it. And just all the actors, it was just like, you know, it was, I was glued to it from beginning to the end. And so, uh, so, so let us know, um, have you, have you done many street tournaments? Yeah. Like that one? Exactly. I mean, that tournament particularly, I played in that park, but then, you know, there's always Rucker Park and then right. Colonel Young Park on 145th and then, you know, King Towers and right. um, downtown on 115th. There were so many different parks and so many different, Hood tournaments that uh, I played in, and uh, and in a lot of them instances, the stakes were high. And fortunately, off court, right? Off court, yeah, the stakes was high. Yeah, the stakes were high. Let's talk about like you know gambling, the money bet, and right. I was on the good side of a lot of those games, uh, you know. And I, I I reaped the benefits from some of those wins, but uh, it was the stakes was high. I don't know how bad the stakes were. I just come to do my job, and that's it. But <laughs> the stakes were high, man. So, so was there any, ever any incidents like that movie where um, violence did merge onto the court? Because we, we, we know that we know the stories of like, uh, like you heard years back the legends of like, uh, like the Jim Jones and the Camerons and the Fat Joes, right. you know, getting into so, altercations. Oh yeah, I got yeah, I have a story. I mean, I played in the tournament. I was I was on the Jay Z's team, the Sean Carter team, where we was playing against supposed to have been playing against uh, Fat Joe's team in the championship. Okay. The day of the championship game. You know, it was a blackout, and we were happen to be heading up to the game anyway. And it was, it was just, it was ridiculous. It was just, you know, you couldn't even get through. And then, so it was a blackout. Then they had the game on the, the next Monday, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, once again, it was ridiculous, but there was no game. It was just, it was just too much. It was too many, too many gangsters in the building, I guess <laughs> you could say. So they were smart enough not to let that game happen. Right, right. Was there any pressure put on any players? There was pressure put on, not on the players, and not on me personally. I just wanted to play. I didn't, listen, growing up in that environment, you you got to be like almost fearless to play in in those games. As far as like you you got to be fearless, or, like you got to release any type of fear. So any of the players, I mean, I don't think that it was anybody who didn't want to play the game. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play the game. I don't care who was there or what. Like let's play it. This is what it's for. But uh, right. they didn't play it because it was just too much. Put it like that. And yeah. I'm talking New York too much. Yeah, and that, that's a lot of pressure when you have Jay Z looking at you. You got uh, Fat, Fat Joe. Joe looking at you. Then you got you got a, a 400 of, rappers up there. 400 rappers and abundance of NBA players playing on both sides. It, it was it was it was a, it was a lot. Wow, that, that's amazing, man. Well, uh, I'm glad that you made it through. Yeah, I made it through. <laughs> and you enjoyed it, so that that's important too, man. Cool. So awesome. So, um, so we just got to our number twos. Right. So um, we already heard one of your honorable mentions, which was above the rim. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Above the rim should have been like actually my top five. I, I might put above the rim at five and put white men can't jump. I put white men can't jump to the honorable mention. Okay. Can I do that? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, of course. Right, okay. So so we're gonna above have my first five. Okay, so so white men can't jump is gonna be in your honorable mentions. Right. Uh what what's the, the second honorable mention? Now my all right, so my second honorable mention, this is before I'm going to number one. Mm-hmm. So this is hard for me because I have two movies and um, I'm, I'm trying to, at, at right now, like the sign of times, I want, want it to be one of them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in my heart of hearts, this is one, this is, uh, the other one is also a good one, so I don't know how to do it. So I'll just, uh, just because of time lapse and some things that people might not know, I'll put that one to the back. I'll put that one to my honorable mention, which would be Amazing Grace and Chuck. Wow, that's a 70s movie, right? That's a 70s movie, late okay. 70s movie. I've heard of them, but I've never seen them either, so. And the reason why I love that movie so much because it's, a, it's like a political movie. It's about a little white kid who uh, found out that the U.S. military has access for, to nuclear weapons, and it will do, uh, you know, it, it's able to use them. He, he found it to be terrifying, so he said, I'm going to boycott. So he boycotted his, his Little League baseball. He said he wasn't playing. At the same time, it was a professional basketball uh, team in that area, the NBA team, which was played by, uh, I don't know the little white kid's name, but the main basketball player in there was name was He played for the Denver Nuggets. He's a Hall of Fame. Oh, can, 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 can you uh, repeat that again? Because you froze for a second. Oh. What was his name? Can you hear me? Alex English. Oh, Al- yeah. Okay, I know Alex English. So Alex, 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 Alex English. Right? Play, yeah, Alex English played with the Nuggets, yeah. uh, but he played for the—he was the star player of the team at that time, you know, in, in the movie. And uh, he held—he heard the story, and he decided that he was going to protest too. Mm. And the powers that be, they was—they was real upset about it. So at the end of the day, uh, he was like, you know, causing a lot of uh, of attention to to the to the situation by protesting. Other people started protesting here and there in other places. And he was in a plane, and the plane mysteriously crashed. Mm. So, but it's a, it's a, like a good political story. So, mm-hmm. I'm gonna put that in my, as my honorable, honorable mention. I would have put it as my number one because I still remember it mm-hmm. to this day. But it was like a good movie. Alice English, the little the little white kid. I don't know his name. Um, it was probably some other actors in there from like the late '70s that mm-hmm. we don't know. But uh, it would be a good movie for you to watch for sure. Okay, yeah, I will definitely put that one on the list. I would give that a, a for sure. Okay, you just put me on to three movies that I haven't seen yet, so definitely going to go ahead and see those. Um, well, my two honorable mentions, uh, my first one, it's actually my opening to, to, to basketball, and I'll be quite honest, I didn't really get into basketball until maybe about 89, 90. Um, so this was my first, th- <laughs> this is funny. All right, so my honorable mention is Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> uh, only because um, you know, and I, I just love these movies where people are just underdogs and you know they persevere. Obviously, if you if you remember the movie, you know uh, when Michael J. Fox turned into yeah. the wolf, he was a bad boy as the wolf. Man. He's a bad boy. He's doing <laughs> putting the ball behind his back. He was doing backflips and dunking and all this stuff. 
But, you know, at, at the end, he, he had to come into himself and, and, you know, really deliver as himself. And people didn't want to see that. But, you know, he, he rose to the occasion and he did it, you know. And uh, at the time, you know, he just got off of doing Back to the Future, which is one of my favorite movies ever. So um, that, that was pretty impactful for me. And um, it's funny because I did see it recently and you could tell, like, all the editing that they did for the movie. <laughs> like, you can see Michael J. Fox, like, yo, he is terrible. You can tell he, he can't dribble. It's oh. the worst dribble that you've ever seen. They know that back then, though. <laughs> yeah, right? He'll go for a lamp, and then he'll just cut away from it real quick. And, you know, he's making the basket, but it doesn't even look like it. It looks like a jump shot when he's shooting a layup, you know? <laughs> yo, I like how when they shoot it, he like he crossed like you know he shoot the jump shot. And he's like he crosses off, but you know it. <laughs> and it's funny because like Michael J. Fox is like five, 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 maybe five, six, like uh, one hundred and twenty pounds wet, and he's like do dominating all these like uh, really big dudes. You know what I'm saying? So I found that really funny. So yeah, that's my uh, my first honorable mention. The second one is uh, he got game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really, just really love that movie because um, it, it, it I, I'm trying to even think if there was any basketball in the movie. I think it was because it dealt more with the politics. It was, it was, it was yeah. a little bit of basketball, but it dealt more with the politics of, uh, you know, uh, starting off in high school, you know, being distracted by a girlfriend, you know, having his father who play, was played by Denzel Washington uh, coming back and uh, uh, Jesus Shuttleworth. Jesus Shuttleworth, um, you know, him coming back into his life and him having to deal with that. So there's always, you know, that, that, uh, that, 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 that cog or that, that monkey wrench being thrown into your life and, you know, him trying to, to, to inject into that, but also seeing Jesus Shuttleworth trying to get into college and, you know, some of the politics behind that as well. So I, I would think that you would probably be able to relate to that at some aspects. Uh, for sure. Uh, you want me to comment on that, or you want me to wait, or you want to? Well, wanna, yeah, wanna... I mean, if that's your number one, then uh, yeah, you, you want to rate it? it? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, 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 he got game that that was. Oh, I didn't rate Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf, I'm gonna give that um, a C minus now, only because it's dated and you know, I see it for what it is now. Still an entertaining movie, but um, he's got game. I'm gonna give that one a B plus. I like that movie a lot. So uh, that, that's that's an excellent take on everything. Everything you said was just absolute correct about the movie. He got game. I was deciding what I was going to do. He got game would probably be my number one. Mm. Um, just on everything. Just I forgot what year it came out, um, but it just it just took an account of just New York City basketball specifically. Uh, did they call the school Lincoln in the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was based on like the Lincoln Dynasty type mm, of thing, but then like the Stephon Marbury's. They had the yeah, they had the father and you know Ray Allen. You know, first I think he did a really good job in the movie. Mm. Uh, of course, Denzel, just you know, just the whole everything, just the the college, the the uh, the recruiting, the you know the money, the you know, and then he's struggling with like the good being the good, like Ray Allen struggled, you know, str that the, his character struggling like doing the everything at the you know navigating through high school which is already tough enough just getting through high school we all know it's just tough enough but when you're just like a superstar then you got your father breathing down your back and you got uh all these people telling you how great you are you got to juggle that at 17 years old 18 years old and it's and it's almost impossible mm. to tell you the truth I, I didn't really realize how crazy it was until like years after i finished high school like how crazy this was i mean it was just like everybody you get letters, you get phone, like every the mm. attention is so massive. And then, how do you handle that? Yeah, let, let me ask you. So, so when you dealt with that, was it very overwhelming for you? It wasn't overwhelming, but it was something significant. It was, mm. I, I, you know, I, I was put like this. I, I think I, I, I think I worked hard enough to get as good as I was, and then I, I kind of expected it. And it was everything what I expected to be. Like it was like or a more though, you know, because mm -hmm. then you got every all these big time college coaches calling you, coming to visit you at your school, sending you letters. Like, you know, I I, I probably had letters from over like 150 schools. Like I used to have garbage bags. Mm -hmm. And that and I was and I was recruited highly, but not like the highest. There were some players who I played with that were it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but, you um, can imagine how, how much they, they get hit with if you're it's a, a lot to deal with. Too. It's yeah. a lot to deal with. So I don't know, I don't know if that movie even told enough of it, but you know, he was struggling with all these different things with the girl, with the you know, this, the that, the money, mm-hmm. the father, this, the legacy, every everything. Mm-hmm. And uh I just thought it was they did a great job. I think Spike Lee did a great job on that movie, just you know, with the actors and everything and um knew a couple of guys that was in the movie, so it made it more, mm-hmm. you know. I was grabbing to the movie even even more, knowing some of the guys that was on the team, mm-hmm. uh, and you know in the movie. So I g- I give the movie an A, just for just for everything. It touched upon everything. It touched upon being a movie. It touched upon what I experienced as what was true to the, to right. the most extent. And it really it really details I, I guess um, being a New York player, which most of these Definitely. movies you know a lot of these movies do are based in New York, so. Uh, it, it, I think it gives a good detail of how uh, the type of pressures, especially being from, you know, a city environment where everything's so fast paced already, you know, yeah. you're, you're just catapulted into, into this life where now everybody's looking at you and what, what are you going to do for me? And, uh, you know, you know, I, I'm on, you know, say I'm a bright and witchy, wherever you want to go. Stardom is good. Stardom is crazy. Even when you're an adult and you and you mature enough to understand everything, stardom and and moderation and all that, those things, those it's difficult thing. Mm-hmm. But when you just think about it, a seven, basically a seventeen year old poor black kid, that's most of us coming in that age. And then we just all of a sudden we just thrust it into this, you know, yeah. this focus. So it was, that's why I thought it was like a great movie. Cool, cool. All right, so so we're gonna go ahead and give your number one to uh, to uh, he got game, which definitely definitely a good movie. So uh, my my number one movie, I think you rated this, at, you you made it your number five, but then you changed it to an honorable mention. Right, is white man can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah yeah right. I, I I I love white man can't jump. I think out of all the basketball movies I've seen that more than any other movie that I've ever seen because to me it was more than just you know it, the basketball was very important to it but I think the most important thing to me was seeing the the street hustle behind it you know um it it it, it really gave like when, when you see Wesley Snipes and you see um uh what was Dwayne Wayne's name um his real name Kadeem Hardison when you Kadeem see Kadeem, yeah you see him and Kadeem Hardison and 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 uh, uh, Woody Harrelson just going at it back and forth, and they're telling all the jokes, and they're dissing each other. Like it, it was, it personified what you see on a basketball court. You know, you, you're playing three on three with some dudes, and they're gonna start talking. Uh, your mom's an astronaut. You know, so <laughs> to this day, it took it took me a while to figure out what what your mom is an astronaut means, but now I got it. But uh, you know, just just those little little quirks like that, and you know the hustle that that Wesley Snipes was putting behind it. You know, you just see some some random white dude on the court. And he's just like, "Who me? You want me to play basketball with you guys?" And l- l- you know, it's like perception isn't always everything. So he came in and just started dominating those games. I, I really love that movie. Um, Rosie Perez. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I forgot that I forgot about Rosie Perez was in the movie. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and she, she's, she's doing the, the voice that she was doing and do the right thing, but uh, she still, I think she came a, across as a great actress in that movie, you know, because she, she had a lot of heart, a lot of compassion. Um, I, I know my sister doesn't, is not really uh, a privy to her voice very much, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I thought Wesley and, um, uh, uh, and Woody Harrelson's, um, relationship in that movie it, the chemistry was just great man yeah, like, yeah. They, they, they just fed off of each other the the basketball scenes were great when they were like they were feeding off of each other by getting on each other when they were playing that one tournament uh yep. was, was was really awesome and, and i think that there was um it sent a sent a great message of of loss and you know gaining and, lo- and losing i should say you know because um just because you win doesn't mean that you really won. I think they said right. something like that in the movie. Yeah, something sometimes, like yeah, remember yeah, that. Sometimes you, you you lose and you really lo- you really won. Sometimes you won, you really lose. You know, so I think that movie really defined that a lot. Um, that one to me was uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give that one an A minus. Wow. Yeah. No doubt. And, and the tournament was just fun. Like the, the the last tournament they did in LA was it was just fun to me. It was the music just like really added to it. So. 
Um, when you actually see, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to spoil this for people that didn't see it. When you see Woody Harrelson actually dunk, and that was like the struggle in the entire movie. Like I, I was, I remember I was in the theater and I actually like got up and pumped my fist at it because I was so excited about that. So yeah, that movie meant a lot to me. Dope movie, dope movie, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I think it was another scene in there with Marcus Johnson. He was playing like a bully. You, I, you probably don't remember, but he was like a, a NBA basketball player, uh, big time basketball player. He played with, he won the championship with uh, Bill Walton and uh, Portland Trailblazers. So he played like a bully. I think it was like one of them scenes when he came and he got mad and he went to go get his went, went to go get the gun from the yeah, trunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was funny to see him because he's like a cool, calm, collected guy. Uh-huh. So that was uh one of uh, one of my favorite parts in there too. That's when he realized he was getting hustled. He was like, Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, all right, no, you know what? I don't believe none of y'all. I'm gonna go get my I'm gonna go get my gun. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, wait a minute, should we stick around or believe him? <laughs> Crazy. And that's something you see you see in the streets too. Sometimes Games get intense, man, and, and somebody makes a threat like that, everybody just leaves the park. Yeah. Well, too bad they're not playing in the parks no, right now, man. It's just oh, a bad man. state for basketball, I think, across all the urban areas in, it the, is. in the country. It is. How, what, what are they doing up there in New York? Are they uh, – did there's they no, put a, a there's no court. on the, the hoops? There's no courts on the rims in, in, in New York. <laughs> Basket. There's no, there's no baskets uh-huh. on the, on the um, backboards right now. Wow. So it's dire straits. Um, you know, being a coach, you get emails. There's no type of indication of when kids are going to be allowed to competitively uh, compete again. Wow. Yeah, so and there's, there's nowhere for them to... to, to, to everybody's going to suffer from it. Every day, I mean, because there's no AU, there's no college. Yeah. Every sports, specifically basketball, is going to suffer. It's going to be a lag. Mm-hmm. You could do all the drills you want. You go to the park. You could do everything you want. But if you're not playing five-on-five competitive mm-hmm. basketball, Frequently, the conditioning is gone. It's the condition. You, I'm telling you, you can run sprints, wind sprints, steps, pool, weights, bike. You can do all, every other sport, boxing, do every other sport, and then you'll get on a basketball court playing it competitively, and you get tired. Right, right. So, so what do you think will be the state of, uh, or what do you think about the rules that the NBA is doing now as far as uh, bringing the season back? Well, that's excellent news to hear that the NBA, we might see some NBA basketball in the summer of all yeah. time period. Oh, I mean, God, yes. How can you not love that? <laughs> Thinking about that. Uh, um, but it's going to be uh, some um, delay of development. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think you can escape that. I mean, players have not been playing against each other. For a while, players wasn't even able to, like, you know, work out. Right. You know, a lot of players don't have gyms in their houses. And they, mm-hmm. you know... So uh, it's going to be a de- it's going to be a delayed development. But those guys are professionals. Those guys are gifted athletically. Right. So if anybody could bounce back, it's them. But at the same time, it's going to be some. Don't expect it to go to high flying. You know, whip the you know, whip around basketball and everything is working. It's going to be it's, right. it's going to be uh, challenging to say the least. But those guys can do it. Yeah, I agree. Especially if they if they don't have fans there either to to kind of amp them up. Oh, yeah. I, I know that that has to be, you know, when you make a dunk and the entire arena is screaming at you, you know, loving what you just Listen, did. All all those players have basically played in environments where there were no fans or little fans or nothing mm-hmm. way way back in the days. But you know, being a professional was a little different. I mean, coming out in, in your home arena. During the playoffs, it's nothing like it. It's nothing like that feeling because you're, right. you're thinking like, I'm about to go rock. I'm about to, we're about to go to the championship. We're about to win the championship. Mm-hmm. And the fans, your fans especially are letting you, they're with you. Yeah, That's gone. So it's now just, all right, I'm going to ride out for me and my homies and we're going right. to try to still see who's the best. And we don't, we don't care about no fans. Kawhi Leonard probably fit in right, right away. <laughs> right, right. He's 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 getting rid of all that. He does, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't need all that all the accolades and stuff like that. But yeah, and I get what you said. I think the the mindset is gonna have to shift where it's you know you're you're not just playing for the fans now. You, you got to play for your your teammates, which I'm sure they do already anyways. But um, it's also gonna have to it's gonna solely depend on that, you know, because the attitude's gonna have to be okay. I'm healthy. My teammates healthy. They are healthy on the other side. I don't have to get sick. Let's go. Right, right, and that's and that's basically it. I mean, it's no other. The fans are not going to be a a factor or or motivator or just check. Just it's going to be it's going to be different. Right. But I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. 
I have no choice. I haven't seen sports in about like I think the last game I saw was a Knicks game. So you know, I, I, oh saw, I saw failure. So <laughs> <laughs> I need something. I need some kind of sports. You know, I can't be watching uh, uh, NBA, uh, uh, ESPN classics all day. You know, sure. so. I, I, I noticed. That I know we both Knicks fans. Is one move. It was Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who what what Knicks there there was actual Knicks in that movie, right? Who, who was yeah, yeah. I, I mean I don't even, I know they had they had uh Whoopi Goldberg was a coach. Right. They had Malik Sealy was actually a Nick. Malik Sealy, yeah. yeah. Uh they had a couple of other players that wasn't Knicks that was <laughs> 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 You remember that movie? Did you ever see do you remember seeing I, I, I saw it one time, but obviously you, you know it wasn't that great. I saw it once. Yeah, That's I, it. I didn't need to see it again, but um, definitely good to see Malik Sealy on it. I, and sure. I, I always wish he was a Nick. So for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, man. Rest in peace. Oh, but man. um, but yeah, man. Look, look, hey, I I really do appreciate you stopping by, man, and and doing this with me. I, I think we talked about some really good movies. I hope whoever's listening, uh, will be uh, challenged to watch some of these films. They're they're really good. I got put on to, to three right now that I'm definitely going to watch. And, uh, yeah, man, do, do you have anything that you want to plug? Anything? You, you have a podcast coming up, don't you? Well, I, th- I have a podcast coming soon called The Social Athletic with S. Scott. So I'm going to be touching on some a lot of basketball. Uh, it's going to be basketball-centric, but definitely going to be talking about some social issues. Um, mm-hmm. Trying to think about the format and, and, and the uh, the venue now, but uh, soon, soon come. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, – you join me back on there because I'm pretty sure we got a lot. We got a lot to talk about other than basketball, man. We got it's a whole yeah. bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, if people don't know who you are, they they know you well versed. So you have a lot of uh, different things going on in that head of yours. So yeah, yeah, definitely I, hope I, to have you as well. I, I try I try to leave that stuff away from my from the movie reviews because oh. I go into a rabbit hole. I'm going deep, but hey, <laughs> if you want me to come on your show and talk about yeah, it, I'll be sure. more than happy to do it, man. For sure. But, man, hey, look, it's been a pleasure to have you here, man. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, check out uh, Chanel's podcast as well. And uh, Social we'll Athletic, you. B. What social was that again? Athletic. Say it again. Athletic. Say it again. Say it again. The Social Athletic. The Social That's Athletic. Athletic. Yeah, yeah, man. Y'all got to check that one out, too. So, hey, Chanel, thanks a lot for joining us again. Peace and, you. hey, everybody, we'll catch you on the next one. And have a good one. Peace.